Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining us on Roadmap on Channel Television, reaching you live from Lagos. I am Gimba Umar. This week on the program, the President, Muhammad Buhari, makes a pronouncement during his inauguration speech, says that the Army's command center be moved to Maiduguri. Well, how well is that going to fare well with the service chiefs? Will they be moving also to Maiduguri? We'll be speaking to our guests, Captain Aliu Umar, retired on what this means for the Nigerian military. Victory cannot be achieved by building the command and control center in Abuja. The command center will be relocated to Maiduguri and remain until Boko Haram is completely subdued. Shortly after the president's pronouncement, the army chiefs met with the president in Abuja to try to fashion out a way and strategy to try to move to Maiduguri in the heart of the insurgents in Nigeria's northeast. To give a general security briefing of the country. And uh, that went very well. I think we'll be able to provide insight into the security situation of Nigeria. The Haram issue is such that, like I told you, we have just given the general briefing with respect to the general security situation, specifically on uh, Boko Haram, I think uh, the level of success is being recorded. We want to maintain the tempo and sustain it until they are rooted out of the country. The command center, uh, we are the one to go back and work on it, and then get back to Mr. How, President. How long, how long is that? No, it shouldn't take too long. Well, that's what we know for now. But what's more important is how the Nigerian army will make their moves into Maiduguri. I've been speaking to a retired captain, Aliu Umar, who tells us how this will be made possible. I want to thank you so much indeed for coming on Roadmap. As you know, there are many concerns with regards to security in Nigeria today, paramount of which is the insurgents in Nigeria's northeast. How is the military command center's move to Maiduguri expected to arrest the excesses of the Boko Haram or fight them outrightly? Indeed, it's, it's in the right direction. Most people are not really understanding what the president sets out to achieve by saying the command center should move to Maiduguri. But I can tell you that given the, given the latitude of the operations, given the size of the operation, given the threats and the nature of what we have gone through these three, four years past, it is apt for the northeastern campaign, if I can call it that, to have a command center. A command center is simply what you can call a war room. That war room is actually meant to give the service chief what you can also call a strong oversight of what is happening at a glance. A command center is where you have your chiefs putting in resource from the field, collating them. A command center could actually have security operations center. It could be a combination of logistics operations. It's also about medical operations. It's also about what you can call uh, intelligence operations. All these operational centers, wherever they are, could be merged into a war room. And this war room is going to street and strategically get input from outfield and from there be able to project where exactly the situation is going to or where we are coming from or where we are. So the war room is actually a situation, a scenario, where you have so many different cross-functional skill sets working together and putting information on the chief's plate. The chief should be able to walk into the war room at any time and he's given at a glance a scenario report of the northeastern operations on time, real time. What would you say to people who feel that this move is a wrong one and it opens up the, uh, the army to so much vulnerability? I tell you, playing the queen into the hand of the enemy is far from it. If today we had an operation in Liberia, would 
the person, the general in charge of our contingents to Liberia sit in Abuja and oversee it. No, he'll have to go to the area of operation. Now we're not talking about contingents to Liberia, we're talking about our country. You see, being a general is simply put, being a soldier. The art of war is your first professional calling. And I want to tell you that going there and setting up a command center has so many benefits. So many benefits. Those who say you're exposing the queen are not actually too informed about what our tactical deployments are. For you to take the chief, there are two possibilities. You're either going to commit suicide or you want to commit suicide, given the capabilities of Boko Haram. I do not want to harp on the downsides of our operations. But then, except of course you are absolutely very lucky, you can just walk in and take the chief. And a command center is not cited just anywhere. The commander-in-chief made a sentence, or a statement rather, move to my degree. That's a tall order. A tall order for the general to now draw out his plans, a tall order for all involved. Setting up a command center is not just something you do at the click of your fingers. You have a lot to consider. But then a command center is a more sophisticated approach, is a more cogent and current approach to handling tactical situations as they exist in my degree. And the moment you do that, the benefits are exponential. There is nothing as motivating for officers and men as when the queen, as you called it, shows up frequently to oversee what is happening. It's called following up. It's called thinking two down. And I can tell you something about the nature of militarism or the nature of military professions. I swore an oath of allegiance to my commander-in-chief, then it was Ernest Schoenecker, and it says, and I quote, to bear an oath through and faithful allegiance to the commander-in-chief, to go wherever ordered, by sea, air, or land.